Good morning. Wow. You awake now? Uh, welcome to Second Unitarian Church. I'm Rob Muller, a member of the Board of Trustees, and my pronouns are he, him, his. Today, we're um, in person here, obviously, uh, also in person at Admiral at the Lake, and continuing to meet virtually on Zoom. We're glad that you're here, whichever way you're attending. If you're in the sanctuary and would benefit from hearing assistance, we have hearing uh, assistance devices available. Please see the tech team in the back. In recognition that COVID, RSV, and the flu are still among us, we strongly encourage people to wear masks during the service. This practice can prevent transmission of the virus and helps us center on the needs of those who are most vulnerable among us. We especially welcome newcomers and visitors this morning. Finding a new community and making new connections can be challenging. We're excited to have you here and looking forward to getting to know you. If you're new with us today, please indicate such in the Zoom or mention it in person after the service. There are blue mugs you can use to signal to others that you'd like them to come up and say hello. Also, we're always looking for folks to help in the kitchen after coffee hour, and that's a great place to see old friends and make some new ones. Our worship today is led by Benji Hart, along with Joy Messinger as worship associate. Music is provided by the 2U Choir, Thais Braslavsky, Diane Sander, and Director of Music, Carl Kennedy. Our time together requires a large group of people who make possible the worship, the music, and technical production of our services. They're listed in the order of service, and we thank them for the ongoing support of our congregation. I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. First, today, after the service, the internship committee is pleased to be hosting a meet and greet event for 2U's first ministerial intern, or new ministerial intern, Heike Egghart. We'll be gathering in the sanctuary at noon. This is an opportunity for members of the congregation and Heike to get to know each other. Feel free to bring any questions you might have and stop by and say hello. Please continue signing up for the 2U dinners. We have a great set of hosts who are excited to have you come and celebrate community and break bread together on December 2nd. You can sign up on the virtual link, which has been in the anvil, or on paper at the welcome table in the back in the Palmer Room. It would be great to have everyone participate. Whether you're a brand new friend of the church or a longtime member, we hope to see you there. These are, there are both kid-friendly and accessible options for this dinner as well. And with that, I welcome Joy Messenger to lead us in our call to worship. Joy. Good morning, everyone. So before I uh, lead this in our call to worship, I wanted to um, introduce Benji Hart, who is here um, as our guest preacher this morning. Sorry, I'm like <laughs> standing directly in front of Benji, which is the best way to introduce somebody. Um, I, <laughs> I've, I met Benji, I think maybe a decade, almost a decade ago at this point. They are a black queer femme, an artist, an organizer, an educator, and I'm so glad that they are here and that you all are either here in person or um, at the Admiral or on Zoom to hear them because literally everything that Benji has to say or ha has written is super smart and very on point and also really relevant to whatever moment we're in. So. Um, um, I am, yeah, I am really excited to welcome them into our community today. And with that, I'll share our call to worship. We are a Unitarian Universalist congregation, a community of children, youth, and adults, a people of many beliefs and traditions bound by, not by the specific things we believe, but the values we share. Whether you are joining us for the first time or the thousandth time, you are welcome here. Whether you believe in God some of the time, all of the time, or none of the time, you are welcome here. Whatever your race, whomever you love, whichever way you move in the world, however, however much money is in your pocket, you are welcome here. And so I invite you, when you feel ready, to take a breath in and out. 
And as the music begins, let us enter into our service together. The song, Daouna Naish, is the inspiration of Samir Badri, a Muslim residing in the United States. Samir recruited Jewish composer Ted Warbrandt to set his words to a tune after they both were featured in a peace rally in Arizona before the bombing of Afghanistan and Iraq following September 11th. As violence once again tears through the Middle East, we are heartbroken for the loss of innocent Palestinian and Israeli life, and heartbroken once more by the willingness of our country's leaders to accept and even endorse this ongoing catastrophe. I am deeply moved by Samer's words. I find um, they are very profound in their simplicity, uh, which translate from Arabic to read, let us live in peace. Let us live in inner peace. Let us weave our dreams together. Let us die in peace. So I invite you to contemplate them with me as we listen to the choir singing Dauna Naish. Thank you, choir. In just a moment, Marion here in the sanctuary in Harris at the Admiral will light our chalices, the symbol of our faith. We light our chalices this morning with these words from Reverend Suzelle Lynch. The flame we kindle in the chalice of faith holds blessings of warmth and light and life-giving energy. It shines forth a beacon to guide us all home, 
It lights up our longings to connect and to share. It possesses the power to shape a world where equity and compassion reign supreme. May this warmth and light and life-giving energy, excuse me, <laughs> the blessings we have claimed and help us extend them in hands and heart, that all of these offer blessings to us all. And we're having some technical difficulties with our chalice lighting, but it is a blessing to do it together. Verse 2, 3, and 4. So we'll sing it one line at a time. I'll sing it once. Just sing it right back to me. This old world is full of sorrow. This all together. This old world is full of sorrow. This old world is full of sorrow, full of sickness, weak and sore. If you love your neighbor truly, love will come to you the more. All right. Verse 2. We are all children of one family. We are children of one family. We are siblings, cousins too. If you cherish one another, love and friendship come to you. This old world can be a garden. This old world can be a garden full of fragrance, full of grace. If we love our neighbors truly, we must meet them face to face. It is said now, love thy neighbor. It is said now, love thy neighbor, and we know well that is true. This the sum of human labor, true for me as well as you. Oh, this old world, oh, this old world. Good adjustment. Just sing this old world back at me. This old world. 
This old world, this old world, oh, this old world, some harmony, oh, this old world, oh, this old world, oh, this old world, oh, this old world. This old world, this old world, old world. I swear there was another slide for the, <laughs> for the vet. Great adjustments, thanks all. Now, I promise no rounds for the words of covenant. Um, please join me in reciting our covenant. The words are on the screen. We covenant to build a community that challenges us to grow and empowers us to honor the truth within ourselves. We will be generous with our gifts and honest in our communication holding faithful to a love that embraces both diversity and conflict. Called by our living tradition, we will nurture spirituality within a vision of the eternal, acting out our inner convictions through struggles for justice and acts of compassion. Now please rise in body or in spirit and join me in singing our congregational hymn, Spirit of Life. I want to invite those who are young in age or young at heart to come and hang out with me here on the chancel. Good morning. It's nice to see you. Barely any kids here today. That happens, right? From time to time, we have family staying at home, doing the things they need to do. But it's such a joy to see you. Uh, when I was going to seminary school, there was an idea that where two or more are gathered, the spirit of love is present. So how nice for us. We're three and four. You're four. You're three. We're all sorts of different ages. It's, it's a, a social construct age. Um, well, do you remember last Sunday when we talked about the giving tree? No, I wasn't there. You weren't here? Oh. I was not here. You weren't here? Libby, were you here last Sunday? Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah? There was a story about a tree that was approached by a boy who was trying to take a little more from the tree than the tree wanted to give. And so the tree had to practice some really good boundaries. That's a hard word, that, right? That literally makes no sense. That literally makes no sense. Well, the tree, the tree was trying to say, you know, I can only give so much. And, the, you know, an idea of a boundary is this way of saying that you can come this close and you can have this much, but I need to protect myself and I need to take care of who I am. So there's only so much I can give. 
But I was wondering if you might be willing to play a game with me yeah. where we practice being trees together. Okay. Do you have a favorite tree? Me. Yeah, what's your favorite tree? When they, when they turn to look like red. When they turn red? Yeah, it's so fun in the fall when they turn red. Maple trees. Maple trees? They're so pretty. They have great leaves. Yeah. Lumi, do you have a favorite tree? The orange trees? I think that are purple. Purple we trees? Went here last week was because we went to Star Rock and then we needed a day to rest after. A day to rest after going to Star Rock. That's what I need after hiking around Star Rock, too. Well, I want you to stand up with me and I want you to imagine your feet are roots. Can you imagine that your feet are roots going all the way down to the ground and they're getting all the nutrients that there are in the ground. Feel your, yeah, like this, yeah, really rooted, rooted, because when we want to have good boundaries, we need to be rooted in who we are, clear and understanding of who we are. And then I want you to reach your arms to the sky to be branches, because branches are a way of connecting to get chlorophyll, I think, uh, into the tree so that the tree can grow and be all the things that the tree needs to be. And then what happens when the wind comes? Uh, they wave back and forth, and they're in the air. And do maybe some of the leaves fall off sometimes? Yeah. yeah. And then anyone hear the sound when you step in the leaves when they're on the ground? Crunch, crunch, crunch. crunch. Yeah. So we are just like trees in that we need to have strong roots. Lots of clear ways of taking care of ourselves, getting the nutrients that we need. But then we're also just kind of hanging out in the wind with each other, yeah. building relationships, connecting our branches from one tree to the next tree. And so I'm excited that you all play trees with me. And we're all going to sing you off to your class. hard for me. Here we go. Again, your trees now with a microphone. So each year we all make a commitment, a pledge to support the ministry of this, our congregation. In addition to this contribution, we take a collection every Sunday so that we can share with those who are doing justice work well beyond our church walls. You are not all able to be in our sanctuary together, but wherever it is that you are, you can find in your order of service or shortly on your screen, a phone number to which you can text and make your contribution today. For the month of November, we are sharing our plate with the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee. Can we have some words from Joy? Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about the UU Service Committee. Um, from, so from the Order of Service, they are a, a transnational, international organization that's maintained a steadfast presence on the front lines of global social justice movements for the past 80 years. They advance human rights and social justice around the world. Um, partnering with those who confront unjust power structures and mobilizing to change oppressive policies. Um, their work is grounded in the UU beliefs that all people have inherent power and dignity. Um, one of um, the more recent things that they have shared with um, their supporters and their online social media community is an immediate, a call for an immediate ceasefire in, in uh, Palestine. Um, and they start in the face of devastating violence in Israel and Gaza. UUSC 
is joining many others in sharing our deep concern for the people and communities closest to the harm and those impacted by generations of fear, violence, and oppression created by racism and anti-Semitism. No civilian should ever be targeted or killed wherever they live. The exploding violence is deeply rooted and can be traced through centuries of persecution and trauma, political, quote unquote, solutions, US government policy, and colonialism. The vestiges of colonialism have created many of the conditions that have led to the current global state of displacement, including violence, persecution, and human rights abuses. You can read the, the full statement on their website, which easily enough is uusc.org. Um, and UUSC also, in partnership with the College of Social Justice, has a human rights teach-in coming up on um, Sunday, December 10th, which is the International Day of Human Rights. And I hope that you all will be able to join UUSC for that event. So now I invite you to join me in reading our offertory words, which are printed in your order of service and are on the screen, will be on the screen. There we go. This church is the community of ourselves. Its energy and resources are our energy and resources. Its wealth is what we share. As we contribute to the life of this community, we affirm it and enable its participation in the larger world around us. The offering will now be generously given and gratefully received. to invite you now wherever it is that you are to join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation let's begin by breathing together try relaxing the muscles in your shoulders Release the tension in your neck. Unclench your beautiful jaw and just breathe into this space, this time we're sharing together. Loving divine, we begin always in thanks. Thankful for the breath in our lungs, the beauty of our earth, and the strength of this, our beloved community. We hold in our hearts those who care for family and ill health, those who live with grief or chronic pain, those struggling with addiction or illness, seen and unseen. We are with you. For parents and teachers and all those whose primary spiritual practice is the care of children, we are with you. Pray for our neighbors in prison, for those who are struggling to stay afloat in the midst of poverty. We are with you. Pray for all those living in harm's way. We pray for our planet and commit to work that will lead us away from the harms of climate chaos. As war 
continues. We pray that wisdom, compassion, and empathy guide the leaders of our world. May they and we be instruments of a just and lasting peace. Our lives are truly blessed by those who knowingly, with curiosity and courage, face their final days. Into this, our shared silence across space, I invite you now to speak aloud the names of anyone you wish to lift up into the loving support of this community. With our deepest compassion, let us hold in our hearts those named and unnamed, those remembered and those forgotten. Let it be so. Amen and blessed be. During our ritual of lighting candles for joys and concerns, we want to continue maintaining our safety with one another. In the 2U Sanctuary, in a moment, you'll be invited to come forward, light a candle, and as you end your time of candle lighting and contemplation, I invite you to use the hand sanitizer that's available. For those of us at the Admiral, I invite you to come forward and take a pebble from one bowl, hold it tightly in your hand, putting your energy into the stone, and then knowing your joys and sorrows to be shared by this community, let it go lightly into the other bowl. For those of us on Zoom, please join by sharing your joys and concerns in our chat window, and I will light a candle here to represent your celebrations and sorrows.
Behold, all of these are shared joys, celebrations, concerns, and sorrows close to our hearts. Joy, would you share our first reading, please? Our, our first reading this morning is written by Audre Lorde. It's likely familiar to many of you and still important to hear again and again. This is a litany for survival. For those of us who live at the shoreline, standing upon the constant edges of decision, crucial and alone. For those of us who cannot indulge the passing dreams of choice, who love in doorways coming and going, in the hours between dawns, looking inward and outward, at once before and after, seeking a now that can breed futures. Like bread in our children's mouths, so their dreams will not reflect the death of ours. For those of us who were imprinted with fear, like a faint line in the center of our foreheads, learning to be afraid with our mother's milk. For by this weapon, this illusion of some safety to be found, the heavy-footed silent, the heavy-footed hoped to silence us. For all of this, this instant and this triumph, we were never meant to survive. And when the sun rises, we are afraid it might not remain. When the sun sets, we are afraid it might not rise in the morning. When our stomachs are full, we are afraid of indigestion. When our stomachs are empty, we are afraid we may never eat again. When we are loved, we are afraid love will vanish. When we are alone, we are afraid love will never return. And when we speak, we are afraid our words will not be heard nor welcomed. But when we are silent, we are still afraid. So it is better to speak, remembering we were never meant to survive. Benji, would you share our second reading? This second reading, I'll read first in Spanish and then in English. Uh, this is a poem by Salvadoran poet Roque Dalton. Como tú. Yo, como tú, amo el amor la vida, el dulce encanto de las cosas, el paisaje celeste de los días de enero. También mi sangre bulle y río por ojos que han conocido el brote de las lágrimas. Creo que el mundo es bello, que la poesía es como el pan de todos y que mis venas no terminan en mí, sino en la sangre unánime de los que luchan por la vida, el amor, las cosas, el paisaje y el pan, la poesía de todos. Like you. Like you, I love love life, the sweet smell of things, the sky blue landscape of January days. And my blood boils up and I laugh through eyes that have known the buds of tears. I believe the world is beautiful and that poetry like bread is for everyone and that my veins don't end in me but in the unanimous blood of those who struggle for life, love, little things, landscape and bread, the poetry of everyone. Let us hear our anthem.
What I'm going to do now is to give a set of instructions and follow them to the best of my ability. I do this not to teach the form or to put it on display, but rather to illustrate the mental process that occurs in the mind of the vulgar when they are creating a new phrase. Stand in one spot, train the eyes forward. Square the shoulders, straighten the spine. Give the dance as an offering. Keep the head and torso stationary. Think of each part of the body as a plane or surface. By touching the surfaces in varied ways, one can generate shapes, playing with symmetry and asymmetry. Lock the elbows, shoulders back. Allow the wrist to drop with its own natural gravity. Use the hand at the elbow as a fulcrum. Cultivate a keen awareness of the joints down to the knuckles of each finger. Be sure that angles are present at every stage of motion. Sharpen your knives. Power can be practiced. Think of the physical phrase as a literal one. Punctuate with snaps of the wrist and decisive ending poses. Forget the difference between dancing and moving. Let music instruct motion. Tell a story with your hands, Javier Ninja. Push memorized combinations until they reveal entire new ways of moving. Imitate and then create. Make something out of nothing. Refine your craft before testing it. B-boys, b-boppers, and all other great improvisational artists precede you. Turn the body into something other than the sight of someone else's desire. Always bring the hands back to the shoulders and face. Trace up the left arm with the right index finger. Be fierce. Fierceness is no singular quality or demeanor, but rather is to locate your own unique element then embody it at all costs. To click, roll the left shoulder gently forward and hold. Think of those who have danced the dance before you. Brush the right cheek with the tips of the fingers. Claim beauty in horror, as only we can. Avoid repeating phrases. Breaking cycle is radical. Pull on the right hand by grabbing with the left. Let daily tasks be dancing 
and make the dance a daily task? Fight to exist as a whole being. Turn the shoulder and splay the fingers. Know that the dead are always moving with you. That choreo poem is called A Set of Instructions. I wrote it over a decade ago as part of a larger movement and spoken word performance, Dancer as Insurgent, which served as my undergraduate thesis in African American studies. I was 21 years old and wanted to tell the world how important Vogue a queer street dance that originates in the underground ballroom scene in New York City was to me. It was the art form that taught me to love my feminists, placing me in a lineage of black, trans, and queer people at a moment when, as a teenager in suburban Massachusetts, who coincidentally attended a UU church, I feared no other black queer people existed. But Dancer as Insurgent was about more than my own relationship to Vogue. Performed for credit at my predominantly white university, it was also an insistence on the art form, not as spectacle or mere aesthetic, but a radical tradition rooted in a long history of struggle against state violence, one with lessons to teach all oppressed people seeking true liberation in turbulent times. Through our oral traditions in the ballroom scene, we trace Vogue's origins back to Rikers Island. The prison is named for the, for the prominent Riker family, including 19th century judge Richard, Richard Riker, who is part of the infamous Kidnapping Club, a group of legal professionals who gleefully sought the prosecution and detention of black northerners, relying on the Fugitive Slave Act as justification to ship them off to slave owners in the South. It's as impossible to separate the legacy of chattel slavery from its current iterations in the police and prison system as it is to separate Vogue from its origins as a form of militant space shaping and community building for black people trans people, houseless people, sex workers, some of the most marginalized and ingenious members of our society. Black trans and queer people incarcerated at Rikers first vogued as part of campy holiday pageants they threw in the late 1970s as a form of entertainment for those on the inside. These pageants were opportunities for queer people to showcase their skill, and reclaim their desirability, but they were also a means to carve out queer space in a place rife with anti-queer violence, not just from other incarcerated people, but from guards, police, and state agents. Vogue, like all dance, like all art maybe, is the forging of connection to body, to self, to community, to ancestry. Connection is always dangerous. Connecting with our bodies under a socioeconomic order dependent on alienation and shame. Connecting with our own power when heteropatriarchy and white supremacy have taught us we are powerless. Connecting to each other, knowing our power grows exponentially when pooled in collective, and connecting to those who came before us, knowing we are here only because they fought for us to be, 
knowing they passed struggle on to us, that it is our duty to renew. Connection is beautiful, but it is also threatening to the forces that seek to keep us isolated and demoralized. To sharpen one's knives isn't merely to concern oneself with precision of movement, but of intent of politic. It is a recognition that while the dance itself moves us, if it does not move us toward collective action in the direction of a more just future, we do it a disservice, failing to take seriously the mandate it has blessed us with. As a slightly brazen 21-year-old who first wrote Dancer as Insurgent, there was much I didn't know I didn't know. Hard lessons and humbling disappointments I'd yet to face. But there were also profound truths in my body that ran deeper than my lack of lived experience. A choir of voices buried deep in my muscle memory, belonging to all those living and dead, who had danced the dance before me. Vogue taught me to listen to those voices instead of suppressing them as my own learned femphobia and homophobia had instructed me. I come here today as a humbler, but no less militant 34-year-old to ask these questions of our collective. What role does art play in community making, in movement building, not as mere decoration, but as a practice of deep listening? Where are the voices in our bodies, in our city, in our society that we've been meticulously taught to suppress and ignore? When we break through this conditioning and tune in, what truths are these voices trying to teach us? Poet and performer Mark Bamunti Joseph describes his disdain for the pejorative phrase, preaching to the choir. Isn't the role of the artist to do just that? In our attempts to shift political tides, we often expend crucial energy trying to appeal to those bent on our destruction rather than rallying those who share the threat of destruction into solidarity, into movement? What if we committed to sway those who are already swaying? The dance finds us shaking, forces us to hone in on the wavelength of those around us who are equally unsure, equally in need of emboldening it makes us into a choir, looking to one another to keep the time to find the next note. The choir within me, the choir I belong to, calls for a ceasefire, for a free Palestine, from river to sea. My choir calls for the defunding of police, of prisons, of weapons manufacturers. My choir knows the US military is the single largest producer of CO2 on the planet and calls for demilitarization as the only means to fight climate catastrophe. My choir knows homophobia and transphobia are colonial relics, calls for black and indigenous liberation, for reparations and the return of stolen lands, understanding that freedom for queer people is impossible without them. My choir knows that raising our voices alone is not enough, that sounding the call is just the beginning. Vogue cannot be separated from its roots, and we cannot be separated from ours. If dance is action, then let us act. And if direct action, community building, and the collective resisting of state violence are themselves deeply creative pursuits requiring all our boldness, 
our most insurgent imagination, then let us dance. Please stand and uh, as you're willing and able to join me in 1017, Building a New Way. to root yourself wherever you are placed, to rest a hand over your heart, or to take a hand of someone near to you and hear this benediction. I believe the world is beautiful and that poetry, like bread, is for everyone. And that my veins don't end in me but in the unanimous blood of those who struggle for life, love, little things, landscape, and bread, the poetry of everyone. 